Welcome to Design Talk 16. This design talk is about extrusions and their use in manufacturing. Pictured here is a simple extrusion box that we'll look at and discuss further along in the presentation. So as to eliminate any confusion right off the bat, let's first say that extruding is a process used to create objects of a fixed cross-sectional profile. This is done by pushing material through a die of the desired cross-section. The resulting product is an extrusion. We'll talk more about this as we move through the presentation. As I was preparing this presentation, I had a look around my condo building for things that were made with extrusions. Here in the stairwell, I noted a few. The handrail is for sure. I can feel and hear that it is aluminum as I run my hand along it. The posts and the balusters are the same aluminum material and are likely made from extrusions. Lastly, the tread cap is also aluminum and likely made from extrusions. While here, note the end cap on the handrail. It is used to cap the end of the handrail and it's functionally similar to the caps on my extruded box seen on the first page. Here in my office, all the picture frames are made from extrusions. Those on the left are made with some type of shiny plastic. Others in the office, like the Rosamond print on the right, are made from aluminum extrusions. In every room throughout the building, all the windows are made with PVC extrusions. This is very common in Canadian residential applications. More common in commercial applications is the use of aluminum extrusions. What's common in your neck of the world? As most of you know, I have produced comprehensive TurboCAD tutorials since 2004. In 2010, I produced a tutorial called Window Illustration. It focused on the creation of 2D profiles that were then extruded and fashioned into the window elements shown here. The profiles are based on ones I found somewhere online, but I made several changes to add my own flair to the mix. Here are the same cross-sections rendered anew in Keyshot just for fun and presentation here. Have I ever mentioned how much I love Keyshot? Stepping back to 2009, my interest in extrusions exploded when I joined a glass door manufacturer as a 3D CAD specialist and then a product design engineer. The type of glass doors I'm referring to are the ones found along the dairy, freezer and meat aisles of grocery stores, convenience stores, liquor stores and countless other places. The doors are sold to all manner of case manufacturers who install them on all manner of merchandisers, vending machines, deli cases and a whole lot more. Although they are called doors due to their obvious use, they are, for all intents and purposes, windows, and we used machinery, software applications, and even terminology common to the fenestration industry. That's architectural windows. Although working through all the product drawings was a great help to get up to speed, I did spend a lot of extra time researching the extrusion process. This included both aluminum and plastic, for all of our products relied heavily on both. There is oodles of excellent help for free out there in cyberspace, and the vendors that produce the extrusions are always open to sharing their expertise and getting you what you require in short order. Two of my favorite vendors to work with were Cardinal Aluminum of Louisville, Kentucky, for aluminum of course, and Vitron Corporation of Luden, Tennessee, for plastic. So we're not going to go into the extrusion process in any depth, as that is far beyond the scope of this presentation. In actuality, I decided on this topic when I was thinking about a new 3D printing project and remembering just how much 3D printing I did when I worked for the glass door company. Because it requires only short lengths of extrusions when checking fit and function of our new product parts, the 3D printer became one of my primary tools. Although the plastic filament 3D printer I used in the office didn't offer the tight tolerances I required, it was always good enough for an initial check. At a later stage in development, I typically ordered 3D prints from Shapeways since they could produce tighter tolerances with their selective laser sintering printing. So one of the other things we produced using extrusions was a resizable electrical box. It was used on walk-through doors like those found on beer caves in liquor stores. Since these doors use perimeter heat in the frames and in the door rails, a surface-mounted electrical box is required to meet connection and safety needs. 
Here you can catch just a glimpse at the top of the double doors and on the side of the single door of the walk-in case. Further along in the modeling discussion, we'll be looking at the electrical box in more detail. If you remember at the beginning of the presentation, I said I had been pondering another 3D printed box. Well, this electrical box was the inspiration for the one I decided to make. Do you remember some of the other boxes we looked at in some of my other design talks? Well, here they are on the left. Pictured on the right are the ones for today's design talk. Although the design seems simple enough, let's pop over to SolidWorks and look a little closer at the design, and let's discuss some of the thoughts behind the design and what some alternative approaches could have been. So here we are in SolidWorks. Here on screen is the extrusion box assembly that I've been talking about. So we'll go ahead and do a real quick exploded view just to have a look at the various parts. Here we can see the main body. Here we can see the top or the cap. Here we can see the end caps and of course some screws. Pretty straightforward really. Just going to collapse that and then I'm going to go ahead and select the main body and the top. going to go ahead and isolate these so we can have a look at the side profiles. So side profiles or cross-sectional profiles is what we're seeing in this view. So you make 2D profiles of what's here and then you extrude those out to length. So I don't want you to look too close here because I didn't actually follow all of the rules when making extrusions. For instance, I didn't add enough radii in some of these corners and I didn't do that in here because I knew I was just 3D printing this. Another thing I didn't check was I didn't ensure that there was enough angle here. I didn't even look when I was doing it. I just did it by memory. So typically you need to leave enough of a space here and they define what angle that should be. I'm not sure if I nailed that. I just kind of eyeballed it this time. Another thing is down here. I'm not sure if I left enough space here. Here I'd have to refer back to the standards that are available to follow. One thing I did do for sure is to ensure that the wall thicknesses was common throughout. So I'm just going to exit isolate here and switch back to ISO view. So as I had mentioned, I did 3D print this just for a quick look at that. This is the orientation I 3D printed. Of interest too is the length of screws that are used. I'm just going to hide this for a second. In here I had specced a 3 8 of an inch screw and because I didn't have 3 8 when I 3D printed this and I had 3 quarter inch I could use those as well because this gives us that opportunity. It's a small thing but I remember the inventory guys saying if you could use something that already exists in the plant use it instead of ordering another part to keep on hand. So if you had 3 quarter or half inch use those instead of ordering another skew of 3 8 of an inch. So I'm going to just show this again. And now we're going to just talk about configurations a little bit. So as I had mentioned, we made electrical boxes of this design are very similar. So you could cut them to length. They were typically quite a bit longer, maybe 18 inches. When I was 3D printing this one, I added this finger mechanism because I wanted to use this as a storage box. So I would be opening and closing it more often than I would if it was an electrical box. So I did add a configuration here without that finger. This is certainly more typical of the electrical box we'd make. And of course the electrical box is a lot longer, typically about 18 inches in length. Let's go ahead and look at a picture of an electrical box. I did make a quick render of that. This is a bit of a cutaway. We're looking at kind of the back. This is the wires that go into the frame of the door. So we're looking at the back side. The finger would be on the opposite side here if you actually use the finger. And of course, here's a connector with some armored cable going out into the wall. Here you can see I've tweaked the design a little bit. When we use these in the glass door industry, quite often there was LED lights along the rails of the frame up and down vertical and so it, we'd have to incorporate a LED ballast in here. So that's why I tweak this design. 
so that this has areas where you can screw the ballast in. And so if you just made two little ribs like this, the screw would go into here, as well as ground wires had to be fastened into here, so we'd be able to put the same in there. So this is just a very simplified wiring. I don't put any connectors or anything in here, but this is just to give you the idea of how it would work. So we'll go back to SolidWorks here. A couple other little tweaks a person could make is based on the lengths of these things. So here you can see I made the top go to the end of the caps here and the main body to the inside. Well, you could tweak your end caps so that when you were doing these on your manufacturing line so that this could be the same length as the main body and then you'd just extend your cap up a little more and it would kind of act as a stop in this location. That's basically what we did with our electrical boxes and in between the end caps and the main body and the top we had had some neoprene cushions made or seals to put in here so that would help keep moisture out in those refrigerated areas. So if you did make these the same length, you wouldn't need to make the little notch in the cap here, which would cut down the cost a little bit for making the end caps. So I'm going to go back to ISO view, just like so. So I didn't make drawings for this presentation. I didn't think it was complex enough that we actually needed that. So that's the design in a nutshell and the thoughts and the motivations behind it. I hope that you enjoyed the presentation and that it'll give you some things to think about while designing and modeling your own products. If you'd like to see some TurboCAD tips for free, visit Don Check's TurboCAD Tips page. If you're interested in delving deeper into TurboCAD learning, be sure to check out the full project tutorials on my Textual Creations shopping page. See you next time.